Okay, so uh, tonight we will finish up our um, our series. We've been talking from 2 Corinthians. I guess I've been doing all the talking. <laughs> We've been learning from 2 Corinthians uh, about the purposes of pain. So God, we, we've talked about the way that God talk and takes our, our very painful chaos in our life, the things that are meaningless and pointless, and he gives us a reason for it. And we looked uh, over the past couple of weeks, we've looked at three of these reasons. He gives it to us uh, to connect with others. Um, he he helps us through our through our through our pain to to be able to teach us about him things that we wouldn't have known otherwise, and uh, he does it to give us a testimony that um, you know we have a story that God has has done in us, and and one that we can also share with others too. So if there's anything that we can learn about pain and suffering as a Christian, it's that there is always a special meaning from our suffering. Maybe it didn't happen for a reason, but God can still create a reason from it. He can still He can still give a special meaning. He can still bring one about. It's our, a, a suffering as a Christian is never pointless. And you might say, well, that's only true if you suffer as far as like for the name of Christ, like being martyred or suffering in ministry. That's that's not true. Um, it's any kind of suffering that you go through. Be it um, even here's here's the ki- real kicker. Even the sufferings that you brought about on yourself are still things that God uses. As a Christian, your suffering is never pointless, even when you deserve it, even when you earned it. That's uh, that, that's good. That, that's a good thing because if you know anything, <laughs> it's going to be a lot of chaos in your life from you. <laughs> uh. So in the, in the there's this Return of the King cartoon. Like if you've never heard of this, um, J.R.R. Tolkien was a was a professor in uh, I believe it was Oxford, and he wrote a book called Lord of the Rings. If you don't know what that is, <laughs> wow, <laughs> I, I don't even know what to say. I I don't know. Uh, there's nothing to say. I mean. Um, uh, he invented languages. He did all kinds of stuff. Well, in 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 one of his books, it's actually the third part of the Lord of the Rings. It's called The Return of the King, and they adapted this into a cartoon in the seventies, or maybe it was the eighties. It doesn't matter. And in this song, I mean, in this movie, they they wrote the song for the cartoon, and I think it's just called "It's So Easy Not to Try." But I've written down some of the lyrics that resized entirely too small. And uh, so I hope you guys have excellent vision. <laughs> Holy smokes, that's small. <laughs> well, I'll read it to you. How about that? Uh, it's so easy not to try. Let the world go drifting by. Never stay around to cry. Move along when troubles come. Travel, travel on the road that's straight, not the one with hills and bends. And I think that that is just perfect for what we're talking about. It's because at the end of the day, we've talked about how there's all these good things that come about from our pain. But at the end of the day, you're left with a very uncomfortable situation. And that uncomfortable situation is that, well, you, you're, you are still going to have pain in your life. You are still going to have suffering in your life. We can talk about how good it's going to be in the future, but for a lot of us, right now, there's still pain. So, I mean, hey, good for us and whenever that happens, but for now, all I've known is the suffering. And I, and I get that. I get that. I will say that it's hard to move past that just by somebody giving you the right answer. It's something you kind of have to, God has to take you through. So at the end of the day, there you still have the suffering. We have the reason. We suffer for Christ. We have the outcome. It turns into a testimony. We experience God's grace in our life. We looked at that last week with uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 12. And we also have an outlook that we gain from this, and that's hope. That we are changed, that in the future things will change that in, in the new heaven, things will forever be changed. So we have a reason, we have an outcome, we have an outlook, but still we have the suffering. We have to accept that. And um, for those of you who have gone through extremely painful situations, you know what I'm talking about. There's a point when you have to consciously choose and accept it. This is where I am. I don't have to like it. This is where I am, so I'm accepting it. Otherwise, you go through this place, this place of kind of like being disillusioned, and you just you don't turn to God for it because you're just like, this isn't real. Like, no, no, this is I'm going to wake up one day and it's just going to be gone. Well, then you wake up and it doesn't go away. So then you have like these overly optimistic prayers, you know, where you're like, well, I prayed about it, so God's just going to cast it off. And then you wake up and it's ten years later and you still have it. And you're like, oh. Well, that's a little, and so the, your your faith is a little bit shook because you you think that God not answering your prayers means that either God hates you, God can't answer your prayers, or you don't you don't deserve it, or maybe God doesn't exist at all, or whatever. 
And uh, so you go through these different places. And so you have to come to a point of actually accepting the pain. And then after you've accepted it, to try. Coming to the point of, okay, this is where I am. I accept this. And then and I'm going to try to obey God. I'm going to try to seek God through it. I'm going to try to trust God. I'm going to try to not give up today. And it, it, that sounds real simple, but when it's actually you there, it's a lot harder. So that takes us to the fourth of the chaos turned into reason that we come to. And that's the very last one that I got for us this month. It's uh, from 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 16, a few verses later from where we were last week. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away. And by the way, if you don't know why he just said, therefore, we do not lose heart, I want to encourage you, especially if you're in a place of pain, just read through 2 Corinthians a couple times. And you just start to see what he's talking about a little bit more. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. For our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, at this point, it's easy for us to check off. Like, okay, he's just being flippant. Thank you, Paul. Thank you, Paul, for being a massive jerk. We think, okay, I'm not talking about waiting in the DMV here, Paul. I'm talking about serious problems. Things that I, I thought God was going to carry me through. I thought I was going to see something miraculous, and I never saw it. I, I had these health problems that came. I, I, I did a church plant, and, and the church plant failed. I, I started this new ministry, and it, it, it didn't work. I mean, I just don't understand this. But do you know what Paul actually did know what he's talking about? He, uh, he goes through a whole list in 2 Corinthians, and I, and I read them to you. I believe it was last week. Maybe it was two weeks ago. If you missed that, please read through 2 Corinthians and read it for yourself. But he gives just a brief list. And I say brief because he didn't, doesn't include everything. He talks about the sufferings that he's gone through and the pain that he's gone through. And it takes up many, many verses. So, you know, I don't want to, I don't want to kill the, um, what's it called? The, uh, I don't want to spoil the ending for you. So if you don't remember what, what I'm talking about, go back and read 2 Corinthians. But in the meantime, Paul does actually know what he's talking about here about suffering. He's not talking about waiting in the DMV either. He's talking about being beaten, left for dead, abandoned by people. Um, you know, coming to the end of your road, being hopeless and depressed, being in physical poor health. He, that's what he's talking about. He's not talking about, you know, a wait in the DMV. And I think that this is part of the problem with taking one verse out of context. Oh, this verse has offered me so much encouragement. Because you, you miss what's going on in that verse and what that verse is really about. And so you kind of make this big idea into a little idea, and then you say that little idea can't really help me. And I think that's why it's really important to read the Bible as a whole. It's okay to go to a website and get like 10 encouraging verses. That's fine. But that won't sustain you for growth, though. Um, okay, so uh, we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. So that brings us to our fourth, uh, sorry, our fourth, our fourth, our fourth of these little reasons from our chaos to gain an eternal glory. The Bible calls these eternal, they're, they're, they're rewards. They are things that are unseen, things that, and, and then here and now, we'll see them later. <laughs> but they're unseen here and now. They are eternal, they're heavenly, and it talks about them as a glory or as a, as a treasure. And it's somewhere along here that people come and they say, well, hold on, I thought, uh, I thought you were saved only by grace, not by your works. Well, I'm actually not talking about salvation, neither is Paul. We see life in the narrow of, of as getting into heaven or not, right? And that severely limits what God is trying to do in your life. Because it basically, this is the conclusion we come up to. Well, I'm getting to heaven, I'm good, right? <laughs> yeah, I snake through the door. It doesn't matter what else happens. But it actually does happen. See, if it didn't matter, then it would be totally okay for you to go and kill yourself as long as you were saved, right? If all the whole point was just snaking in through the door, suicide wouldn't be a problem. But it is a problem because God does have bigger plans he doesn't want to just sneak in the door. And uh, so that brings us to what he's talking about here. So it, it's, it's, it's not just simply heaven or hell. It's more. It's the rewards that we earn. See, nothing gets us into heaven but belief in Jesus Christ. See, we sinned against God. God's wrath is poured out against unrighteousness. The only way to get rid of that wrath that God has on us is to accept Jesus' free 
sacrifice that he died for us as a sinless sacrifice. We accept that, and he stands in the gap. He is our righteousness. So it's not how good can I do. It's Jesus paid it all. That's salvation. Okay? So that, that's fine. That, that's, that's, that's how you get to heaven through Jesus alone. But what we do in life earns rewards, earns treasures. Jesus talks about this a little bit when he talks about not storing up wealth and riches here on earth, but for those that can't be eaten by moth and can't, you know, rust. But Paul is actually talking about it again here. And we're going to go through it verse by verse just to kind of help you see what he's talking about. Therefore, we do not lose heart, though outwardly we are wasting away, yet inwardly we are being renewed day by day. So let's take this apart. First off, our body is wasting. Well, what's that talking about? Well, anybody over the age of 30 doesn't have to have this explained to them, <laughs> but yeah, maybe maybe you're just severely optimistic and you're disillusioned. Okay, your body, it's falling apart. <laughs> um, it's There was a cartoon I saw. I want to see it was called Anastasia, maybe. And the guy's body parts kept falling off, and he kept picking them up. But do you guys remember that cartoon or no? It was Anastasia? Okay, that's what I thought. There's like this creepy old guy. I don't even really remember the story too much. But he's all like his arms falling off, and he's all putting back on. So our body is wasting, but we are growing stronger in faith. So as our physical time comes to an end, our spiritual time is just barely beginning. See, we came into existence in our mother's womb. And then, ever since then, it's been a ticking clock of our physical body dying. But the good news is <laughs> that our spiritual body was also created in that womb. God placed it there. And as we grow older, that body, hopefully, <laughs> this is the idea, is growing too. That's the idea, once again. Some of us kind of fight God along the way. Uh, but we are growing stronger in faith. We're growing stronger in our relationship to God. Our thinking is changing. We are experiencing God in new ways. The Holy Spirit is changing our hearts. These are things that inwardly we are being renewed day by day. That's how we're being renewed day by day. But the whole outwardly we are wasting away, we don't really need somebody to explain that to us. <laughs> we, we experience that every day. When we suffer, but trust God in our suffering, and, and when we do what's right, that is working the character of Christ in us. See, when, when somebody mistreats you and you still do the right thing, that, is, that, works character, that works the character of Christ in you. God is able to work through those situations. When we suffer and we trust God, God is working character in us through that. What we are, in fact, Paul even talks about it in the, in the sense of our suffering reveals what is lacking in our character as God is working. So he said he, this is from Colossians, he said he literally rejoices in his suffering because it is filling up those holes in his character. I'm, I'm rewording that just slightly to kind of, so you don't have to read the whole book of Colossians, but it's in the first couple chapters. You can kind of start it yourself. Um, so what we are experiencing over time now is going to be completed with our resurrection. God in the now is working character in us. He's changing us. But that is going to be fulfilled in the new heavens and the new earth when we are given our resurrected body. Okay, um, This is what's called foreshadowing. So how do you know the hope of glory? Well, the same is sometimes you feel the you feel the weight, the burden that you just can't carry anymore, that 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 suffering, that burden of suffering. You feel like I just can't make it anymore. That is an indicator to you that there is a greater weight of glory coming. Every time that you feel that weight of suffering that you just can't can't make it anymore, it is a reminder of the weight of glory that is coming. Every time that Every time that you see God changing you, that is a, a down payment, if you will. It is a, a, a guarantee that there is a time coming when God will completely give you a new, new body. So that takes us to verse 17. I think 16 is more or less easy to understand. Uh, verse 17, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory that far outweighs them all. Now, Hear what he's saying and don't just cast it off as he has no idea what I'm going through. I am suffering way worse than he is. Just hear him out for just a second, okay? The worst that this life can dish at you, okay, is a light and momentary affliction. And the reason for that is because your time on earth is just not that long. 
it's a ticking clock before it ends, which I know that might seem morbid, but it's only morbid if the whole point of life was to live as long as you could on this earth. Well, that's not the point of life, so it's not morbid. The worst that can come on us is still light and momentary in comparison to what is coming. See, the glory of heaven, and not just the glory of heaven, but the once again, the weight of glory that we will be receiving, our reward, our treasure, that we're receiving from the works that we do in this life, both of those things together outweighs any suffering that we go through on this on this earth. Right? Think of it like this. Um, I tell my kids, you have to eat all of your broccoli before you can have ice cream. Think of it like that. It's, broccoli's not that bad, is it? <laughs> No, not the ice cream. Ice cream is wonderful. Don't you say anything against ice cream. I will tell you what. Uh, without Christ, though, <coughs> without Christ, death is the ultimate disaster. There's nothing worse than worse than death if you don't have Jesus. It's like I, I lost my kid, and there's nothing to bring me bring me through again because I'll, I'll never see them again. It's a complete hopeless situation, right? I have cancer, hopeless. I have this happen, hopeless. Everything is hopeless without Christ because that's it. Life is all about this life, and that's it. And it's terrifying, but with Christ, it is just another step in the journey. Anything you go through in this life is just another step in the journey. Well, I'm tired of this suffering. I'm tired of having to deal with this. I'm tired of, okay, granted, but you're still living. <laughs> God is working through those annoying situations, character that is lacking in you to make you into the image of Christ. So not only is it a ticking clock for your healing, because that is a, we will all be healed eventually. <laughs> Maybe not in this life, but we will eventually all be healed. And that, that makes it seem not so, not so uh, difficult. Because if you've got chronic pain and chronic illness, you, you, you wake up with it every day. It never goes away. Sometimes you never even really get to sleep because of it. <laughs> but with this, we know that, okay, my healing is coming eventually. When I go into heaven, I know I will not take my, my sicknesses with me. It's like a no entree here. And that, that's, that's good. So, so, okay, not only is it a ticking clock for our healing, it's also a ticking clock for our relief. Eventually, God will bring his relief. But while that clock runs, while that clock of suffering is still going, and I want you to hear what I'm saying here, our sufferings, our pains, and our troubles are producing a greater reward for us in heaven. Which means that our suffering truly, our suffering for Christ truly is never pointless or hopeless. And I do want to point out what I said a couple weeks ago, that the emphasis there is for Christ. So you can go through a sickness and not make it about God at all. Or you can go through a sickness and turn it into an opportunity to trust God. And now it's building up in your bank account in heaven. Or you can sit around and complain about it and not trust God through it, and it doesn't add to the account. It's your choice, but you don't have to have pointless sufferings. Any suffering can be for Christ if we seek him through the process. So that takes us to verse 18. So, for our light and momentary troubles are achieving for us an eternal glory. It is earning us an eternal glory or an eternal treasure that far outweighs them all. And he's not talking about heaven. Heaven, yes, but he's talking about more than heaven. So we fix our eyes not on what is seen, but on what is unseen. Since what is seen is temporary, but what is unseen is eternal. Okay, now, now this might seem worse than, than what it is, okay? The, the seen, that's things that you live with in your life, right? So like your money, your, your house, all those things. The unseen are the things that you're not touching right now. You don't see Jesus face to face right now, right? You don't have hold of that eternal glory yet. Our possessions and our health, those things are seen. And I want, you to, I want you to start seeing your health in those terms. It's something that is seen. What does it matter if I die with 100 books or zero books? What does it matter if I die in perfect health or in terrible health? So you see your health is yet another one of your belongings because then you see that God has gifted it to you for a time and he can take it away. And that's his decision. And once you kind of change your perspective there, it, it really it really changes, well, it changes the hopeless situation for once. So our, per, our possessions and health, they're seen, and they are temporary. No matter how good your health is, you are eventually going to die. 
And here's another thing. It, they do not satisfy us. People talk a lot about money not satisfying. And they talk a lot about your possessions not satisfying. But I'll go a step further. Your health doesn't satisfy. I remember being a kid in perfect health and still unsatisfied, still discontent. See, it, once again, this would be very, very cruel if the whole point of this for, was for us to go to the grave in perfect health. It would be very, very cruel and mean. But that's not the purpose of life, so it's not cruel or mean. And those things don't satisfy us. Oh, if I had perfect health, then I'll be happy. I wasn't happy before Before when I did have perfect health. What's, what would change it now? But we think somehow if God just takes away all of our suffering, then we'll be happy. No, no, no. No, no, no. Then you just won't have God working character in us. See, you're giving up nothing. But you're gaining perspective. When you lose your physical health or your money or your belongings, you're giving up nothing because you don't take those things with you anyways. But if God allows you the blessing of losing some of those things on this side, you gain a perspective that you wouldn't have had before. You gain a comfort that you wouldn't have had before. But I had to suffer. I lost my house. I lost my family. I, I'm sorry that that happened to you. But God is giving you an eternal glory through that suffering if you trust him through it. And that doesn't sound so bad after all. Heaven, God, the resurrection, eternal reward of glory, those things are eternal. They can't be taken away from somebody because somebody can't come into your home and steal them. And they satisfy to limited degrees here on earth, but in heaven, completely. You will go through times in this life not being satisfied. That's just how it is. Um, I mean, obviously, a lot of that is, is a choice, obviously. But either way, those times are going to come. But in heaven, that's the end of that. See, faith is about what is unseen, trusting God the hope that we know is coming, our eternal home, our reward. And through faith, there is no pain that doesn't have purpose. It, it, I heard it said in a song, and I don't know if I wrote it down. I did. I believe this is from a, a song by a guy called David Crowder. I could be wrong, but I think that's where it's from. What? It is? Okay. And I, and I don't know the CD or anything, so... <laughs> Sue me. <laughs> but uh, the, er, the lyric goes, Earth has no sorrow that heaven can't heal. And I, I think that's okay. You know, May, Maybe it's not half so bad that you have to go through a little bit of crap here. I mean, think of it like this. Okay, you got a, a wonderful house and all your family's there. You're going to have a great meal. But there's this, there's this river in between. It's, 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 it's a miserable river. There's mud all over. So you're like, okay, I'm trekking through the mud. This is not great. Well, then you step out on this side and right into a cow patty. You know, those cow patties that are like fresh and your foot kind of sinks into them. You're like, oh, it went into all the cracks. That is life, okay? That cow patty is not that big of a deal. You just take your foot out. You sometimes lose your shoe. And then you get to the place at the other side, and that's the, that's the good thing. So how does this apply to you? Oh, boy, oh, boy. Well, I'm glad that we got there. Boy, oh boy. We don't have to wait for there to be no troubles in your life to have joy. You, you don't have to wait for, I can be happy once that happens. I can have joy once that happens. We can have joy regardless because God is always working. Because we are getting a reward. Because heaven is coming. Because God is with us. Because God comforts us. And because we have a testimony. And who knows, maybe that, maybe that testimony will be an opportunity for you to make a friend. We don't have to wait to have joy. We are scared and, and we're not ready to die. But here's the thing, when, it, when it's our time, check this out, God is going to guide us when it's our time. Then. Do you know how I know that? Because God guides us now. Why would God stop guiding us then? See, I know what God will do because I know his character. And I can see him following that pattern. He's not going to suddenly become faithless because I'm dying, right? That makes sense, right? So right now I'm scared of death because I'm not there yet. But when I get there, you know, I, I have a really good feeling that God will give me the peace that I need. I, I have a really good feeling about that because that's what he always does. That's his character. He is who I need him to be. He, he is who I need him to is 
when I need him to be is. That's just, that's just how he does. Either way, our, 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 our pain, our suffering, our death, it's only a moment. Only a moment compared to eternity. We spend a good amount of our life worrying about one moment of death. <laughs> Think about this. Let's say God gives you 60 years. Let's say you have a long, painful death, and it goes on for about a year and a half. Okay? It's just, roll with me on this, okay? We spend our entire 60 years thinking about the one and a half years of discomfort, and we just psych ourselves out. When There's a whole mess of stuff after that. I mean, that's not the end. That's just one brief, very painful, unfortunate bit, of, and then there's the rest of it. I mean, think of, uh, here's a good example. Whoever's had kids knows exactly what I'm about to say. You know, the, the labor's not real fun. <laughs> the pregnancy isn't very fun, <laughs> if you're the husband. <laughs> uh, for the women, it's all shrimp and, and pickles. What do they care? But, uh, <laughs> but then for the moment of labor, it's not fun for anybody. I mean, nobody in that room is having fun. The baby's not having fun. The doctor's not having fun. The woman's not having fun. The guy's not, nobody's having fun. And then what happens? It's not five seconds later they're holding their baby and they're like, yeah, it was worth it. But if you rewind for five minutes earlier, you'll remember that the, she was squeezing his hand and saying, this is all your fault. You know, but then after the baby's there, well, then it's not his fault anymore because it's not so bad. That's kind of how we treat God. God, this is all your fault. You could just speak the word. Yeah, but just give it a minute and the birthing pains will be over. You'll be in heaven and everything will look a lot different from there. It'll look a lot different from there. So, um, just a few last things. We doubt because we argue from what we haven't experienced. Heaven. See, none of us here have experienced heaven. So we argue, oh, our pain is too hard, our suffering is too hard, because we're arguing from something we haven't experienced yet. I guarantee you the future you, the one that is in heaven, will look back and, and say, well, you know what? I might have been a little hasty on that. Instead, we argue and we we argue from what we have experienced suffering. See, all we've ever known in this life is suffering. So we assume that that's all we know, that that's all there is, because we haven't experienced heaven yet. No. So in suffering, we look only to what we know, disappointment. But through faith in God, that shows us what we don't know. See, faith in God shows us something that we do not know. And that's a weight of glory. But you can't get that, that, that revelation, that insight, unless you look to God instead of to the problem. And the last thing I want to say, your struggles are for the sake of God's kingdom, threefold at least. Number one, your struggles are working in you. See, you are not just a number to God. You're a person. And God is working throughout these, these struggles for God's kingdom, you, as you as part of God's kingdom, working character in you, yes. Number two, your struggles are for the sake of king, the kingdom as far as others. This is the part where God works through you and reaches other people because they also, hopefully, will become part of God's kingdom too. Or maybe it's the people who are already saved and you're encouraging them then they are already part of God's kingdom. And then the third way that your struggles work for the sake of God's kingdom is they work towards what's coming, the new heaven and the new earth. Because we pray, God, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven, but God's will is endurance through suffering. God's will is going through suffering and rejoicing in his name. God's will for you is to rejoice, not to complain and gripe. God's will for you is that as you go through the pain, he gives you a purpose for it. That's God's will for you. Lord, I thank you for what you're doing in us and through us, and I just pray that you keep up the good work in us, God. Help us to have the patience uh, to see things from your long perspective. And Lord, I pray you give those who are suffering comfort as the, in the way that only you can, God. There's just something... Something that you do where when we're going through these sufferings, it just, it just, we just can't, God. 
you have this way of giving comfort, sometimes through others, sometimes just through your Holy Spirit, where you speak to our heart and you lead us down a path that we weren't going. You don't say, hey, you have to go through the suffering, so good luck. You take us through the suffering and you walk with us and you give us comfort and peace and joy and you give us a purpose and you lead us forward. God, I'm praying right now that you would give anybody here who's suffering tonight, that you would give them that, that, that purpose Help them to see the weight of glory that's coming, but also that you would give them comfort tonight. That you would give them good peace and, and good good rest while they're going to sleep tonight. That you would help them to resolve conflicts with the people that maybe they've been in conflict with for years. And Lord, this very week that that would happen, Lord. And uh, we just thank you for what we know you're doing. Amen.